Hi, everybody. Uh, Dr. Anthony Yoon here, um, America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about something that has been in the news quite a bit today and yesterday, um, and it's breast implants and ALCL, or anaplastic um, large cell lymphoma. Uh, this is something that we have been looking at as plastic surgeons and are obviously very concerned about. And what I thought would be helpful uh, for all of you, for my patients, as well as for the people who are following me, is for me to go in and kind of explain what's going on with this, what we know about it, and uh, what, where to kind of go from here. So what do we know about it, um, what can we do about it, and where do we go from here? So just to get started, once again, we're talking about anaplastic large cell lymphoma. There was a, um, you, you may have seen a couple of uh, various news reports lately uh, where they have discussed that there is this very rare type of cancer. It's not breast cancer, but it's a cancer of really the surrounding of the scar tissue that can surround a breast implant. And that this very rare type of cancer is something that we are studying and that we are obviously concerned about. So let's start by kind of discussing what this is. So breast implant associated ALCL, or anaplastic large cell lymphoma, is a type of lymphoma or cancer that arises in the capsule or the scar tissue that surrounds the breast implant. So once again, this is not true breast cancer, but it's a cancer of the scar tissue surrounding the breast implant. Now, how does it present? Well, the most common presentation of breast uh, implant related, uh, or breast implant associated ALCL is a spontaneous fluid collection about eight to 10 years after placement of a breast implant. Uh, this can be either reconstructive or cosmetic. So whether you have implants cosmetically or reconstructive, um, this is, has been found with that. Um, so most of the time it basically presents as what we call a seroma. So a seroma is a fluid collection that can develop around uh, really any time you have surgery. And the most common presentation of this is people, women who've had breast implants for many years, eight, 10 years, and they spontaneously develop this un unusual fluid collection around the implant. Uh, there are other things too though, other signs of it as well. Um, and the other signs are a mass, it has presented in that way. It is also presented as basically a swollen regional lymph node as well. And what's really important to realize with breast implant associated ALCL is that it is most common with textured breast implants. Okay, um, so implants can come in a textured or in a smooth form and I've got them here to show you. Um, this is a smooth type of a breast implant. You can see it kind of looks fairly clear and uh, has it's, it's typically a round shape. There's not a top and a bottom. There is a front and a back. Okay, but this is a typical smooth silicone gel filled implant. Um, there also are textured implants. This is a textured implant. Uh, typically textured implants uh, quite often will come in a teardrop type of a shape and the textured surface, I'm going to bring it close to the camera here, feels a little bit rough. It's almost a little sandpapery um, and that's what we're talking about with the textured surface. So the ALCL, the breast implant related, a, or related ALCL is typically most common with the textured breast implants and that's important that we'll, we'll go into the importance of this in just a little bit. Now, how much are we seeing? Prevalence. Prevalence basically means in medicine, how often do you see something? How often is it out there? Um, currently, the FDA has had 359 medical device reports to the FDA. Uh, and this includes 203 textured implants, 28 smooth implants, and one that's called an another surface. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. Uh, this appears to occur in both silicone and saline implants and some of these are duplicates. So it doesn't mean that they have found 359 um, total as some of those are duplicates. Now, um, recently the um, American Society of Plastic Surgeons, the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, and the FDA, and some other regulatory agencies have uh, created this registry, the Patient Registry and Outcomes for Breast Implants and Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma Etiology and Epidemiology Database. They just shorten it to profile. And they found, as of March of 2017, as of this month, a total of 126 confirmed cases of breast implant-associated ALCL um, for their database. Okay, so these numbers, once again, are what we know right now. 359 device reports, some of those are duplicates, 126 confirmed reports on our database that, that the plastic surgeons um, and, and other physicians will report to. 
Now, there was a study uh, from two years ago in March of 2015 uh, that found a total of 173 of these uh, B, uh, breast implant associated BIA uh, ALCL cases in the entire world. Uh, a study uh, that was published in November of 2016 in Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, which is our major um, white journal, our peer-reviewed journal in plastic surgery, found that the cases, however, are likely being underreported. Okay, so those are the numbers that we know about, but those numbers are probably uh, actually higher than, than what they are, you know, than what I just gave you. Uh, interestingly enough, 9.9% of United States plastic surgeons have seen a case, at least one case, uh, breast implant associated ALCL and 26.8% of Australian plastic surgeons have seen one. So much higher risk for some reason in Australia, yet if you go to Germany, less than 1% of German plastic surgeons have seen this. So why there's this regional variation, we're not sure, um, but there does appear to be a regional variation with this type of breast implant associated um, ALCL. Okay, so how does this come about? Well, we're still learning this. There was a recent study that was published in uh, June of 2016 in the PRS, the White Journal, that found that there was an increased number of a certain type of bacteria in the patients who developed uh, ALCL related to their breast implants. And the uh, bacteria is called Ralstonia. This is one actually I've never heard of before. It's a gram-negative bacteria. And this was found as a biofilm on mainly the textured breast implants. Um, and so the idea that, that right now one working hypothesis, and once again this is not proven, but one of the working hypotheses is that if you develop or if you uh, get a certain type of bacteria like this Ralstonia on a breast implant surface, it can create what's called a biofilm, which is kind of a thin coating of this bacteria on the breast implant. And after many, many years of this implant being there, stimulating the lymphocytes, uh, it can actually cause chronic stimulation that could potentially maybe how the ALCL then, the cancer, uh, is created. Uh, once again, this is a hypothesis. Studies are currently being done on it, but this is one of the main hypotheses that we're looking at is it's potentially bacteria mediated. Now we do know that with textured breast implants, and once again, let me show you these again. This is a textured breast implant, and this is a smooth breast implant. Uh, with a textured breast implant, uh, because there's kind of these little, um, to the textured surface has kind of little uh, uh, grooves and stuff like that, tiny little ones, uh, it's possible that the bacteria can actually get trapped in there and can grow in there more, and we do find that, that it is a, um, easier ground basically for bacteria to accumulate versus a smooth walled implant um, that may uh, not be as easy of a surface for the bacteria to um, accumulate on. So that's the idea is that we think maybe it could be due to bacteria uh, creating this kind of inflammation, uh, a chronic lymphocyte stimulation that may lead to the, um, to the cancer. To date though there have been no confirmed cases of smooth surface only BIA ALCL reported. And this is very important to realize, okay? So to date, there's been no confirmed cases of a smooth walled implant um, definitely being associated with this ALCL. It typically seems to come much more commonly with the textured implants. So what do you do? Obviously, this is a big question if you're watching. If you have implants, don't panic, okay? It is important, however, to be informed. There are only several hundred cases that we know of, and there are millions and millions of women who have breast implants, okay? So this is, not, this is a rare, rare um, but a concerning situation, obviously, with breast implants, but it is still extremely rare. We're still getting more numbers where, you know, and once again, I, I mentioned earlier that it, it does appear to be a bit underreported, but it's still an extremely rare situation. So, you know, sleep well at night, you know, tonight, don't panic. Um, but definitely you want to be informed about this. You want to undergo your routine medical care and follow-up. So get your mammograms as your physician recommends, um, do your breast self-exams and that type of thing. If you notice changes in the shape of your breast or in large lymph nodes and you have breast implants, then it is important for you to see your plastic surgeon. Uh, this is technically whether you have uh, whether we've known about this ALCL or not, this is still something if you notice changes in your breast shape or in large lymph nodes, you should see a plastic surgeon anyway to get checked out. Uh, and in most of these cases of confirmed BIA ALCL, the patient noticed the changes themselves. 
okay? And so this is a typically not something that you see that's kind of under the surface that you may not notice and is kind of brewing there. Usually you have a sign of it. Once again, the, the main thing that we usually see is a fluid collection. A fluid collection could present as uh, enlarging of your breast. Typically this is eight to 10 years after presentation. We think a hypothesis is maybe it takes that certain period of time for that type of uh, bacteria to create the inflammation and the reaction that may create this type of a cancer. Um, and so if, if you're somebody who's just had implants put in, this isn't something that you know is likely, obviously, to happen to you. Um, and once again, you know, this is typically something that you want to obviously be aware of, but um, you know, once again, not worry yourself uh, a ton about it because it still is a rare situation. And you also do, I do recommend, to pay special attention if you have a textured implant. Uh, once again, we do find that the rate of this uh, ALCL is higher in women with textured implants than in women with smooth implants. And because of that, and this is just my recommendation, this is not the recommendation of, of our societies, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons or the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, and other plastic surgeons may disagree with me on this, but if you are considering breast augmentation, talk with your surgeon about it. You know, it is a consideration. Should you do a round, smooth implant um, as, as a way to hopefully prevent, you know, worries with this type of thing? Uh, in my patients, I do a lot of uh, breast implant surgery. I probably do 100, 150 a year. And in the vast majority, 99% of those cases, I do typically use a round, smooth implant. Um, and so it's something really for you definitely to discuss with your physician if you're thinking about having breast augmentation. And if you're looking for more information on this, I encourage you to go to the um, American Society of Plastic Surgeons. Uh, the website is plasticsurgery.org backslash ALCL. That's plasticsurgery.org backslash ALCL. That's going to give you much more information about this. A lot of stuff that I have, information I've given to you, you will see that there. Also know where you can follow up with. Uh, and obviously ask your own plastic surgeon because you know this, these are things that we are getting educated about. Uh, in general, if, if you're interested in things that every plastic surgeon must know, I encourage you to check out uh, my website, dryun.com. Um, I think it's so important for patients to be informed and informed that not everything is um, is uh, uh, exactly how we want it to be. There are risks with everything that we do. Breast implants obviously have risks themselves as well. So there is a free ebook, 10 Things Every Plastic Surgery Patient Must Know. I encourage you always be an informed patient because um, this is a way that you hopefully get the results you're looking for as well as you know, the health that, that you will keep for the rest of, you know, for a long, long time. Uh, and if you're interested in following me, uh, I do give every Wednesday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. We do a Facebook Live called Look, Live, and Be Better, where we tackle all different subjects. Uh, right now, it's uh, Wednesday, March 22nd. Uh, tonight, I'm talking about various uh, cool little options to treat embarrassing health issues uh, and beauty issues. So if you've got bad breath, um, if you've got uh, man boobs, uh, if you've got issues with uh, excess sweating and other things, I will cover that tonight. So um, I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, definitely breast implants and ALCL is something that is concerning, but keep in mind it is a very rare situation. Definitely be educated about it. Uh, I'm going to post this on my Facebook page. It will also be on YouTube, so feel free to watch it again. Take a look at the American Society of Plastic Surgeons website uh, for more information. Uh, I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's holistic plastic surgeon. Thank you for watching.